Hello and welcome back to Rev Real Estate School. I'm your host, Michael Montgomery. And today we're talking about our 12 cheat codes for real estate agents in 2023. And in fact, these also just apply to life in general. So what exactly are these cheat codes? Well, they are ways that we're challenging our current perspectives. Our current perspectives on how we can grow our business and how we can grow as individuals. That's what we're going to be looking at through these 12 cheat codes. And I would get out a pen and a piece of paper to actually write these down and absorb the ones that are really resonating with you. Because I'm sure there'll be a few in here that will very much resonate with you. So write these down, keep them close, review them on a daily basis because they can change your whole trajectory when it comes to real estate. Let's dive in. Number one, consistent, hardworking agents beat pure talent and well-connected agents every single day. So this one is extremely important. Regardless of where you are at right now, consistency and hard work will beat anything in real estate. If we stick with it for a longer period of time than somebody else, and we do it on a consistent basis, we are going to beat pure talent and well-connected agents. So yes, there are certain people that come into the industry, maybe with a marketing background. So they just hit it out of the park right off the start when it comes to marketing. Or there are agents who just have these really large networks. Maybe they grew up for generations, they were in this community. And so they're just naturally going to have more connections. So they get into the industry and they just blow up right off the start. However, here's the thing. The consistent hardworking agent will beat them. Will beat them every single time. The real challenge is, are you going to stick with it for a longer period of time? And are you going to be dedicated to learning and hard work? Because if you are, you are going to be able to beat any agent out there, any agent whatsoever, regardless of what they are coming into the industry with. Number two, your willingness to be uncomfortable will determine the size of your bank account in real estate. So there's a reason why everybody in the world is not real estate agents and why not every real estate agent is a huge top producer. And most of that comes down to their willingness to be uncomfortable. Their willingness to publish a post when they're not 100% ready to publish it. Their willingness to make an uncomfortable prospecting call. Their willingness to send that email. Now we've all been there where we've been sitting there and we've wanted to hit send or we've been looking at the phone and we've been looking at that number. So remember that our willingness to actually put ourselves in these uncomfortable positions will dictate how large our bank account is over time. So when we're thinking about the easy thing, we may be thinking, okay, well, it's Saturday, I may just take it easy. Or you may be willing to be a little bit uncomfortable and go sit that open house. Those people that are willing to be uncomfortable and go sit that open house will win over the long term. Number three, Learning is your biggest lever. Anything in the world can be learned if you have the appetite. So regardless of where you are at and what you want to know, you can learn it. And sometimes these things come down to things that we think are innate, like people skills. So this agent is great because they're an extrovert or they have really, really good people skills. People skills can be learned. People skills can actually be absorbed and learned. And so regardless of what it is that we want to learn, the actual fact of learning and being able to learn is our greatest lever. And especially in real estate, in life as well, but in real estate. If we want to learn something, the fact that we can and our willingness to do so is going to dictate our future. So understand that that is our greatest lever in real estate, our ability to learn. And here's the final thing with this one is we as real estate agents, we are self-employed and we also have to be self-motivated. So this is actually a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because nobody's going to tell you, you have to go out and learn this concept, but it's a blessing because a lot of agents aren't going to go out there and learn the concept. So the fact that you have to learn about how to do social media advertising, well, most agents aren't going to learn that. So the fact that you are going to dedicate yourself to learning it is going to put you in a completely different place than the counterpart who is just not willing to learn. So it is, it's a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because yes, we have to find the fire within ourselves, but because we have to find the fire within ourselves, it's also a blessing because you can and will do it. Number four, if you provide a high level of service, it is your duty to market yourself and ask for business. If you don't, 
the customer will be left with a subpar agent. So oftentimes we think to ourselves, well, we're all real estate agents. There's a whole ton of real estate agents in my city. Why is one person going to choose me over this person? We offer the same thing. We sell your house, but you don't. You offer a level of service. And so if you can look at your level of service, your level of care, your level of empathy, your ability to listen to your client, if we can put all of that together and you can say that you provide a very high level of service, then it is actually your duty to market to them and to ask for business because otherwise you're leaving the customer with an agent who may not be that great. And here's the issue is when we have too many agents that are not that great, then our industry gets painted with a brush. And that has happened in real estate, right? When you talk to people about real estate agents, typically they're not super excited about us, right? And that's because our whole industry has been painted with a brush. So if you provide a high level of service and you take care of your clients, it's not just for you, the fact that you're marketing and building your business and asking for business. It's actually for them because otherwise they won't necessarily get the best agent out there. Number five, the main thing standing between you and what you want is just asking. It's just asking. And so really when it comes to growing our business and when it comes to asking for business, oftentimes we don't want to. We don't want to because we don't want to get rejected. It's all grounded in fear. And here's the thing is that's okay because we are human. We actually don't want to be rejected. We're human and that's perfectly fine. However, what's standing in between us and what we want is honestly just asking, just asking for business, just asking if somebody will mentor you, just asking for help. All of these things are things that we can do, but we have to risk potentially being rejected. And again, coming back to number two, we have to be willing to be uncomfortable. So if we're willing to be uncomfortable, then asking is just part of that. Asking for business, asking for help, asking for a mentor, because you'll be very, very surprised how many people will say yes. Number six, the highest producing real estate agents are no smarter than you. So this one actually comes from a quote that I read. And this quote was really, really funny, but also very, very true. And it's that there's idiots all the way up. And so what this quote was talking about was the corporate world. And oftentimes the junior employee thinking, oh, you know, that executive is so much smarter than me. There's really just no chance in life that I'm going to get to that level. And uh, this was an executive who said this quote or a CEO. And he said, it's idiots all the way up, letting people know that regardless of where you think you are, everyone all the way up is going to have certain roadblocks. Everyone going up is actually in a position of not knowing what they're doing. We all don't know what we're doing and that is super freeing. So if you think that that top producer does not have any issues and always feels like they have it all sorted out, they don't, they absolutely don't. So the top producer up there has their own fears, has their own things that they're struggling with. So the fact that you think that you are a different type of person, so you can't actually get to this level because it might be smarts, maybe it's how connected you are, maybe it's what you know, maybe it's just who you are as an individual, maybe it's the fact that you have ADHD or dyslexia, which I have. So what are these things that are holding us back? Well, everyone all the way up has things holding them back. So the top producer is no smarter than you. You can actually achieve that. And it's idiots all the way up. Absolutely love that quote because it just helps us understand that we are all human. Number seven, easy and successful are not friends. It takes consistent hard work in order to achieve anything worthwhile. So in real estate, when we're looking at people who have produced at a level that we want to get to, it's not easy to get there. It's not easy. And if it was, then everyone would do it. Even coming back to our first concept, consistent hardworking agent is going to win against the pure talent and well-connected agent. It's the same concept here. The easy and successful, they are not going to be friends. We have to choose one or the other. You have to choose one or the other because if you're going to choose success, you are going to have a hard road. It's worth it. It's 110% worth it. And it's not just because it's hard. It's not just purely for the sake of it being hard. 
Like if it was purely for the sake of it being hard, well, you could go out and just run a marathon right now and that would be really, really hard. But it's not just about the hard. The hard gives us purpose. The hard gives us something to push towards. So challenges in life are really a true blessing because if it wasn't for these challenges, we wouldn't have a purpose. Anything worthwhile is truly not going to be easy. Anything worthwhile, doesn't matter if it's life or real estate, things that are hard, such as raising children, these things aren't necessarily easy. They're not easy at all. Building a real estate business is not easy, but what is worthwhile in life is not easy. Number eight, deliberate weekly planning will change your whole career trajectory. So I'm not even talking about daily planning or yearly planning or monthly planning, specifically talking weekly planning. Now, why is that? Well, that's because the week is something that we can actually get something done within that week that is very, very impactful. We can actually change our whole career by planning out our week. But here's the thing, we can do our plan for a day, but we can't always do our plan for a week. So if you have built out a perfect weekly plan and you follow it to a T every single week, you are doing fantastic. But for most of us, myself included, as I was growing my business, I would build out these weekly plans. Monday, Tuesday, I could get through, but Wednesday, we kind of started to fall off track. So if we are able, to build a weekly plan and we are able to follow it, it is going to change our whole trajectory in real estate. Now, in order to build a weekly plan, we also have to have daily plans. But if we're just focused on the daily plan, the daily plan can be fairly achievable. But when we think of a weekly plan, we're able to start building in larger, more impactful projects. Now, the other thing that's really important about this one when it comes to weekly planning is we start to prioritize the important but not urgent. So if you think about that Eisenhower matrix, so if you think about that Eisenhower matrix where we have important and urgent and we have important but not urgent and we have urgent but not important and we have not important and not urgent. Well, the urgent stuff just kind of gets done. If something needs to get done, it will get done. If we have conditions that have to be removed, if we have an inspection we have to go to, if we have a buyer that needs to see a home, these are urgent things they are going to get done is in the non-urgent but important. And when we are planning our week, we're going to tend to fit in these important things that aren't urgent. But when we're planning our day, oftentimes urgent just takes over. And so that's why weekly planning can be a total game changer as long as we actually fulfill what we planned out to do. Number nine, default to tackling the problem head on versus overthinking. So this can work in a number of different ways. Let's first start thinking about social media. Let's not overthink it. Let's start hitting publish. And so that is one of the main overthinkers is social media and what are we gonna do and what's our marketing campaign? The other one is this concept of marketing campaigns. Now I have looked at some marketing campaigns for a year before actually doing anything with them. When in fact I could have just launched it, tested it, see if it worked, and in three months to six months either got rid of it or double down on it. So I think in real estate, Oftentimes we just, we just kind of default to thinking about it and researching it and double downing on the thinking side of it when we really need to be doubling down on the action side of it. And we should be thinking in many ways like a tech company where we are testing things and we're learning. And so we need to default to action and not overthinking. And the same thing goes when we are dealing with a tricky client situation. Instead of sitting there and overthinking and dwelling, what can we do? What can we do? What can we actually do in order to help the situation? And that will truly change our whole business because now we're moving into action and a way of just overthinking. Now that doesn't mean we don't have to stop and think at certain times. That's extremely important, but generally we tend to over index on overthinking versus not thinking enough. Number 10, decide between writing video images or audio and start producing content. One piece of content per day. This could be a story, this could be a post, this could be a reel, this could be a TikTok, this could be a tweet. We just need to be doing one piece of content a day. And we also just need to choose our medium. Now, I think we know this, but how do we choose our medium? Well, we need to marry the concepts of where is our actual client and what do we like doing, okay? So if our client 
is on a platform that is driven by video and we don't like doing video. Let's say we love writing, but we know we need to do video. Which one should we do? This is a tough question. This is a really tough question. Do we force ourselves to do the thing that we really don't want to do when we actually want to write or do we write? We write. Do what it is that you want to do. Your audience will find you. So if you are producing videos and you absolutely hate producing videos, you are going to stop. You are going to lose your motivation. You are going to fall off track because it's hard to be consistent with something that is just draining us day after day after day. So choose the medium that you are most comfortable with and that makes you come alive because it's going to cause you to produce more content. And even if your target client is more focused on video, you are still going to be producing content on a regular basis in a way that makes you come alive. That's what's important and one piece of content a day. Number 11, move fast. So this one is also very similar to this concept of overthinking, but move fast is not just about going and doing things before we actually know how to do them. Moving fast is about testing. Moving fast is about testing, learning, and adapting. When I'm thinking about moving fast, I think about a period of time in my career where I was going through these listing presentations. It was a couple of months and I had a number of listing presentations and I was losing all of them. I was losing all of them and I would lose the listing presentation. I'd kind of be down in the dumps and I'd go into another one and I'd lose it and I'd kind of be down in the dumps. And then I kind of felt like I was in this rut. When in fact, the moving fast version of that would have been what happened during that listing presentation? Can I get some feedback? How can I adapt and change and test something new for the next one? Oh, that one failed too? How can I test something new for the next one? So we have to be thinking more like a technology company. We need to be testing. We need to be testing our assumptions. We need to be trying new things. So the other thing that we tend to do in real estate is we do tend to start to get involved with something and we just do that and we don't test other mechanisms. So if we are wanting to write and so we're really comfortable, let's say writing a blog, we should also be trying to write on Twitter because here we go, we are now trying to test more assumptions. We're trying to test different avenues. So instead of thinking, let's just sit back and do what we wanna do, think, move fast. Where can we be testing? Where can we be changing? Where can we be adapting our presentation? How can I adapt the way that I'm actually showing a property, doing an open house? And so we should be thinking like that versus just going through the motions. Finally, number 12, taking two non-consecutive days off per week, like a normal human. Now, this is very important. This is very important for a few different reasons. The first and obvious one is burnout. So if we are working seven days a week, eventually that will come to an end. We will reach burnout. It's going to happen. You're not just going to work seven days a week and just continue on doing that and working 12 to 14 hours a day and not burn out. You just won't. It will, it will definitely come up and it will catch you. And here's the thing about burnout is sometimes we think, okay, so I burn out and then I take a few days off or I go on a trip and I come back and I'm all rejuvenated and ready to go. That's not the way burnout works. Burnout works in a way that you can end up losing your motivation to sell real estate. It has happened to me where I've burnt out and then I have not been able to get up and go to go out there and sell more real estate. I became resentful of the career. So burnout is not a joke. Burnout is not just let's go on a vacation and we're going to come back ready to work our 14 hour days, seven days a week again. That's not what burnout is. Burnout can actually just take the joy out of your career. So yes, that is a very important component. It's taking care of ourselves. But here's the other one. Here's the other one that we don't tend to think about. When we actually end up taking two days off, the five days that we're working, we need to be working on task. We need to be working smart and we need to be working hard. So by taking two days off, you're forcing yourself to work harder on those five days. And the other really nice thing, so my day is Wednesday and Sunday. Tuesday night for me feels like a Friday night because then Wednesday feels like a Saturday because I have the day to myself. Now, how do we actually do this in practice? Well, yes, we may get client emails. We may get client calls. This doesn't mean you just don't answer your phone at all. I will answer my phone, but if I am able to push something to the next day, I will. And so sometimes an email will come in that I can answer the next day, no problem. Actually, most of the time, it's actually pretty rare that you're going to get a call or an email on your day off that needs attention and needs you to do something right, right now. 
Sometimes that's true, but it's funny, it doesn't actually happen as often as we think it will happen. I would say try this, and if it completely doesn't work, I'd love to know because I haven't seen this not work. Yes, you will get the odd call, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that has to be the norm. And if somebody wants to see properties on Wednesday, you can just simply ask them, does Tuesday or Thursday work? And nine times out of 10, one of those two works. So these two days off is going to help prevent burnout so that you stay enthusiastic and enjoying your career, which then helps you progress. And also it's going to ensure that you're working hard on the days that you're working and you're not just kind of going through the motions, which people that work seven days a week, 14 hours a day, oftentimes they're going through the motions because after a period of time, you will just lose that level of fire and that motivation inside of you. So those are your 12 cheat codes for 2023. Reach out anytime at revrealestateschool.com or I'm on Instagram at the.michael.montgomery. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next lesson.